So this is a big deal when it comes to cybersecurity. There's a lot of conversation going on nowadays about the use of AI, whether it be good for society, bad for society. I wanna talk about a very concrete example of where AI is bad and the trend that is being shown here is not great. It all starts with this HTTP3 stream dependency cycle exploit that was reported on HackerOne. If you don't know what HackerOne is, HackerOne is a bug bounty platform. Organizations can register on HackerOne and then researchers can submit findings, bugs, for money, basically. If you get a critical bug in Curl, for example, you're able to get up to $9,200, and they do pay, right? This has paid out $16,000 so far just from Curl alone, and they've only been here on HackerOne for about six years, so you know, money is being paid. This report came from this researcher called Evil Gen X, which we'll get into their whole background here in a minute, and they say what seems like a pretty legit exploit. A novel exploit leveraging stream dependency cycles in HTTP3, resulting in memory corruption and potential denial of service. That's that's pretty bad. The attack surface here being if someone using curl, you know, a very commonly used tool for querying a web server and getting a response, if they use a newer version of HTTP3 or HTTP, which uh, uses quick and a new framing protocol format, there's a vulnerability in curl supposedly that they could, that the server could use to get code execution on the client. That's, that's a pretty big deal. So they go through how to set up the server using AIO quick. They go through and give a pretty good breakdown of how to set up the environment. They go into the crash that they found supposedly. They set their core dump limit to unlimited and then they set up GDB on curl and said, wow, look, we have a crash in this function, ngtcp2, which is a library used to implement TCP, HTTP3 handle priority frame. And they say that R15 is set to all A's, R15 being the uh, return address in the ARM architecture. So this happening means that there is a bug that gives you code control over curl. And so far, you know, as I'm reading this, not a lot of, a lot of alarms are going off. It seems like they give a good way to reproduce the environment. They give a good way to do the exploit. And then they have a crash that happens in PC. Okay, so what's the problem? So if you read the comments on this ticket, as they start, the patch file supplied does not apply, at least at least against main branch of AO, AO Quick. Before we start analysis, want to make sure that starting assumptions are the same. Can you explain where you want send cyclic priority to be injected? This is where things get a little hairy, right? If you read the style of this response. If you read kind of the structure of this, they went from like very human, very like normal, what you would expect from a bug report to go. And then this is a comment. So like humans are talking here and they kind of go very robotic into this issue summary. What is a cyclic dependency? And it starts to smell a little more like AI. This is where Daniel Stenberg hops in. I did a video about him and his coding principles previously. Again, he is the maintainer, the primary owner of Curl. He has a whole blog that he wrote about how to write safe C. Now he steps in. Now notice that the bug supposedly is due to a stack recursion in NGTCP2 HTTP3 handle priority frame. That is what the researcher reported. There is no function named like this in the current ngtcp2 or nghttp3. Please clarify what you're talking about, which versions of this library did you find the problem in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I call this AI slop and he closes the ticket. Somebody, be it the researcher themselves or probably the AI that the researcher is using, hallucinated a function and created a crash report for a stack overflow via recursion in a function that doesn't exist. We we live in truly crazy times that this is even possible. And until this comment in the thread, I was I was bought in. I was like, oh, okay, that's a little weird that he typed like that, but like, okay, whatever. And then, uh, you know, he comes in, Daniel, and he's like, hey man, by the way, the function you are talking about does not exist in the code base. So what's the plan? Now, he is so infuriated by this that he actually goes on to LinkedIn to post his new rules for submitting bugs to HackerOne. Every reporter submitting security reports on HackerOne for Curl now needs to answer this question. Did you use an AI to find the problem or generate the submission? If they do this, they can expect a stream of proof of actual intelligence follow-up questions. We will now ban every reporter instantly who submits reports we deem AI slop. A threshold has been reached. We are effectively being DDoS. Here is the issue that's happening here. In security, my job during the day is I'm a security engineer. I literally, my job is to find bugs in software, write up mitigations and make sure that bugs don't happen in software. Security resources, like the people whose job it is to take 
bug reports, triage them and fix them, do not scale linearly with the number of reports. Meaning, if there were to be a 2x, 3x, 4x in the number of reports that can be generated, there are not enough security people or security processes to look at all of these reports and make them go away. To either triage them, to figure out what the source of the bug is, to determine if the issue is a real issue or a non-issue, and if it's a real issue, to find the fix. Daniel is talking about here is a very scary thing that I see happening in the world of AI powered researchers, where a lot of trust is being put into these AI engines, right? We have these people that are just submitting these bugs that make claims of bugs that don't even exist or are that like somehow finding crashes in functions that aren't real. This is a denial of service of the security community that can lead to one of two very dangerous outcomes. The first one being, we could just completely exhaust the community, right? We could create a scenario where there are just not enough people to review all of the bug reports and to fix all of the bugs that are reported, or we could create a scenario where there are people who are reporting legitimate bugs and illegitimate bugs, and legitimate bugs could slip through the cracks because, oh, that one's just AI slop. This is part of my gripes with the whole bug bounty community, I think. Like, obviously, the bug bounty community is a net positive, and it's a good thing that people are getting positively compensated for finding bugs in software, right? In a perfect world, people would just go find bugs for free. Companies wouldn't have to pay them out. We would submit the bugs, we'd find all the bugs, and there'd be no more bugs for no, for no money, okay? That's not the world we live in. We live in a capitalist society where people rightfully want to be compensated for their time. So as a result, when you have to spend time on something, you would like to receive some kind of money for it or some kind of you know compensation. And so that's why bug bounty payouts exist. Now there's this weird incentive structure where you are going to look for bugs and try to find bugs kind of at any cost just so you can get that compensation. Like, you know, $9,000 is a huge chunk of change for anybody, right? If you can get one of these a month, Brent, if you know how to do that like regularly, call me because that's like impressive. But you know, nine grand is a lot of money. So we have this weird incentive structure now where people are gonna try to submit Submit bugs at whatever rate they can, be them slop or not, to try to get lucky and, and hit this, this jackpot. And so as a result, I think I'm not surprised this is happening. It's kind of just a product of the system we built. Now that's assuming that that's a non-malicious submission, right? You have to also consider the scenario where this account is maybe a test account for some kind of Jaya Tan-esque attack where they're testing the waters to see, hey, does the security community notice when I submit a very well-formed but fake AI submission, and if they don't, how many of these can I submit and get away with it? Even though I'm not getting paid, maybe I'm causing the security community to spend more time than they should on fake resources or on fake submissions so that when I find a real bug or when a real bug is contributed by another puppet, there are so many resources being spent on these fake ones that they're not gonna find the real one. We still have not seen a single valid security report done with AI help. So if you are concerned that AI is taking your job as either a programmer, as a researcher, et cetera, I don't think we're there yet. Now, I do think that this will change. I think eventually there is going to be a place where AI can find bugs in software, either through source code or reverse engineering. Because they're very good at processing a lot of data at once. That's kind of the one issue that humans have, right? Is we can't just look at a thousand lines of code and like build a graph on our heads, right? The AI is much better at this. However, they're not good at it yet to the point where they can meaningfully find bugs. I have a couple takeaways from this, first of all, if you are a security researcher who is using AI in your workflows, good on you. I think that's a good thing you should be doing. It does help you maybe to scale the power you have as an individual. But don't forget, A, that an AI does and will make mistakes. Check your math. Make sure you check the AI's math. Check your, uh, check your own math. Um, and don't just trust in the computer to make the right choices. That's how we're going to have the vibe apocalypse, personally, where code is going to get significantly worse. And we're just going to have another WannaCry malware that comes out because someone vibe coded a service that's network facing and we're just all, we have to deal with it then. And two, if you're on the malicious side of this where you're just like submitting these reports with AI just like to cause Daniel and friends to get plugged up and not be able to do their jobs, Cut it out. And wow, look at that. By the way, if you want to learn to program in the world's safest language, Rust, uh, my Rust 101 Foundations of Rust course did start recently on the Level Academy. Get in there, learn the basics of Rust, learn how to code in Rust, learn why Rust is not that scary. In the course we go through, we compare Rust to C, and I'll teach you the basics of how to write memory safe code in a language that is taking the world by storm and getting more popular every day. Uh, the courses are on sale temporarily, so get them while you can. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it, guys. If you're new here, hit that sub button. I do videos like this all the time. I love you. Bye.